Let's continue our general election coverage. Now, this morning we speak to a government minister, a member of the House of Keys for nearly five years. He's 54 years old, married for 30 years. That's quite an achievement with two no longer teenage children, I would think now. Um, good morning, Russian MHK, Lawrence Skelly. Morning, morning, James. You, you've been in MHK since September 2011. You've got a history of activity in all things Manx, a strong sense of community and pride. How do you believe you've benefited Russian over the past five years? That's a very good question because that's the first question uh, people ask is what have you actually done for the people you uh, represent and obviously I'm asking for that uh, trust once more and uh, for a sit back and a reflect there's a number of things first of all I think we've uh, uh, managed to gain 17 acres of recreational space for our uh, community which we're trying to realise right now 30, 39 affordable homes we've got preschool equalisation for our area and uh, the big one that we're working on right now is that uh, we're going to actually bring forward some legislation Legislation. It's not just going to benefit Russian, but the entire island with regards to dilapida- dilapidated properties, of which we have, I think, more than our fair share. So that, I think, is, uh, is, is headlines. But there are a whole host of other things, I believe, that we've uh, done very well. Island-wide, how troubled will the next five years be? Have we put our too many eggs in one basket? Are we too reliant on the, the financial services industry? No, no, I don't believe so. I think our um, economy is more diverse than it's ever been. So, so from that point of view, I think we're very well positioned. So these last five years have been difficult. It's no doubt about it. We've had the VAT loss and of course we've had the recession which has uh, impacted our local economy and it's that diversification that's actually seen us through and allowed us to have a, still have a grown economy. Let's see how true you remain to your manifesto. I know you said you were completely against cuts in education. Mm. You did oppose the tuition fees. I think you also said MHKs and MLC should not dictate their own salary structure. It should be evaluated in, independently. Yeah. We all know how that's gone. Yes, indeed. And, and, and you know, we have the Lord Lisvane report before us there. And I note that one of his recommendations, which I would endorse very strongly, is that uh, we are evaluated separately. Therefore, uh, we should also have our compensation evaluated separately, too. If a number of sitting members are re-elected in September, who would you vote for your next chief minister? Well, that's a very good question because I think there's a number of people uh, and some people we don't know who are actually going to stand at this particular You'd vote stage. for yourself, wouldn't uh, you? <laughs> you, well, you? But you have, have you been going around, I've had it on good authority, you've been going around offering, if you're successful, you put your name forward and potentially offering jobs to colleagues? Not at all, not at all. Uh, that, 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 that would be a rumour that's un- untrue entirely. And, and I think at the end of the day, I think we've all got jobs to do. Some of us got probably bigger jobs to do in the run-up to the election. And then, of course, you know, we need to uh, ensure we get the uh, trust of the people that put us there in the first place. What is your political ambition? Well, my political ambition is to do well for the people I represent, not just Russian, but also the Isle of Man. And as you said there before, we're going into a very difficult period. We've had a difficult five years, but I think it's going to be even more challenging uh, five years. And I think that will uh, will bear out in, in terms of experience and so forth. And that's what we need to uh, consider. Only time this morning to, to touch on a few issues. But the Villa Marina Gaiety corporatisation, mm. it's been poorly managed by your department, hasn't it? The, the staff there are uncertain. They, they've been left in limbo. Yes, uh, I know I sympathise with the staff and that's why I did actually go meet with them not not that long ago uh, because we have not been able to progress that. But do bear in mind that as a result of DCCL collapsing, then falling into our department and uh, now we're actually trying to do the scope of government reports, I think, which we all signed up to do. But the the tender process, though, it's been almost scrapped and started again, hasn't it? No, it has not at all. Uh, The tender process has been delayed. Uh, We are now... What, till after the election? uh, Well, we can't complete that. And if we were to do this, and as you just touched on there, these are people's livelihoods. We need to ensure that we do this appropriately and don't rush anything through. I know you're for, you say you're for protecting the vulnerable. How would you go about trying to potentially save the, the over 75s having to pay for their television licences? Well, it's not just about protecting the vulnerable because we have used that statement, but it's about caring for the vulnerable and also enabling the vulnerable as well at the same time. So we do need to consider that. And I think we do also have a big question mark with regards to what benefit we get from the BBC, not just the over 75s uh, TV licence issue. In 10, 15 seconds, why should the people of Russia invest their vote in you? Well, I would hope that they feel that I've represented presented them well. I think we've worked very well together. Uh, we reduced from two, to, uh, from three to two, and I think we've represented it very well. And hopefully, uh, we'll have that confidence on 22nd of September.